Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 5. We've got a bunch of questions, some Q&A questions to go over that you've sent me over the past few weeks. I've been asking for them occasionally, so I've sifted through some of the videos, some of the questions that I've posted on Twitter, and also on the community tab, so stay up to date on all of those if you want, you know, your theories or ideas to be put into the videos. But also... I've gone back and looked at some of the concept art from Andy Poon, who is the concept designer for most of the Arrowverse stuff, and there is some unused concepts in terms of Barry's suits that I really want to talk about, and I'm going to link it into one of your questions. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this is super exciting. So I went back. And I looked at some of the old concepts because it flashed up when I believe one of the websites, I think it was Heroic Hollywood, actually posted an article on it. So I was like, oh crap, I totally missed this. And so yeah, it's really cool. And I'm going to link it into this first question that one of you guys had. So do you think Barry will have a new suit in Season 6? And this debate came up actually last week because... We were able to go back, and I don't specifically know who found it first, but during episode 17, I do believe, when we're in the future, it is 2049, and Iris is walking through Star Labs, and it's all sort of decommissioned. You see the different flash rings, there's new flash rings in the future, and there's this suit behind Iris, and this suit is visibly very similar to the season 4 suit, but it's fixed, obviously and it has the red old emblem so it's been made on purpose it's been planted everything you see in a tv show obviously you can make mistakes but that's not a mistake that you're leaving a suit in a shot that is not the original suit i could be like understanding if it was you know the original suit maybe that was an accident but everything is planned out and this is a different suit we saw so I think it's up for debate whether we're going to see that, but I think the idea is to get a suit in the future, a future Flash suit, and obviously upgrade and sort of go back to more of the old style, because as you know, there's been a lot of backlash last season in season 5 to the suit, because the suit wasn't very good, I have to admit. Not a big fan of that suit at all, I really am missing the chin strap, and the sort of design of the suit really doesn't mould to Grant's figure it's sort of all flappy around the neck and it looked weird throughout the season so I just thought it was a big downgrade from the amazing suits in the past so we're gonna go over these concepts that Andy Poon actually posted I believe in December so it's been a while but I somehow missed them and basically there's three concepts I'm going to be going over and then we'll go on to some of the Q&A questions so the first concept is and this is all for season 4 by the way, so it was concepts for the last season. But you know, they can incorporate it in the future again, if they want to. So, we're going to go to the most comic book accurate suit of them all, and this is this one. It's got the gold boots and everything. We're going to quickly read through what Andy said about it. He said, a lot of fans are asking, where are the yellow boots? We have tried versions of designs that have gold slash yellow elements, or gold boots. At the end of the day, it's a little bit too much. Here is another alternate design that has more gold elements around the boot area, and that's the photo you see on the screen right now. I gotta say, I like this. I wasn't such a big fan of the Season 4 suit, but now looking back after Season 5, I think it's a really good suit. And I think the gold, maybe at the time, I thought it was too much, but... I have to admit, this concept looks really cool, and I can imagine that maybe the gold would be a bit too much, like, having that much gold, but it just looks really nice. It looks very comic book accurate. Obviously, it's not exactly comic book accurate. You know, the earpieces aren't exactly the same in the comics, and, you know, the chest is a bit different. You've got the sort of darker lightning bolt rather than, you know, a normal lightning bolt or just... The way, because you know, the flash suit in the comics changes so many times and it has changed so many times. There's not one specific way, but it feels very comic book accurate. And that's what they tried to do this season. They tried to go a bit simple, they tried to make it comic accurate, but nah, it didn't work. And people are saying, and people have messaged this and put this on Andy's page the boots, 
Nora had gold boots, that's a true thing, but you have to consider this, and I'm defending Andy and, you know, the people who make the decisions behind the scenes for the suits. It may not look good on Grant with his red costume compared to Nora, because Nora's costume wasn't as bright as Grant's costume would be because Nora's suit is not red. So I think it's just whether it looks good in real life. Remember, this is concept. Concepts look really cool. You know, you can design them, but it's not real life, and it all comes to real life, really, in the end, when you decide, yeah, this works, or no, this doesn't work. But I'm a big fan of this concept. You see all the lightning bolts, the gold, and I really do like the dark sort of tones throughout the suit, and the chest looks good, sort of with the six-pack sort of thing, and it's got the zip. It's not like a weird kind of suit like it was this season. And you've got, you know, these lighter elements of the red, and then you've got the darker elements. I really do like the mix. I think it's a really nice concept. Now let's move on to the next concept. And this concept is simple, and it's obviously a lighter suit, as you can see by the color. It's again for season four. It wasn't used, and I think it's nice, but I'm not such a big th fan of it. I think it's a bit too bright. I believe the color on the other concepts is actually a lot better and it's a bit plain and it does remind me of the season 5 suit although I think it does look better than the season 5 suit design I'm still not you know completely digging it compared to the other design which I was really impressed by I think this is good but I don't think it's like amazing like the other design I thought was amazing and so yeah it's just a bit plain it's a bit too bright for me and I think I would like some more texture. So let's move on to the last concept, and this concept is very similar to the first one. It just has a bit less gold, and it's a bit more simple, and you know what? I think I actually prefer this. I think this is my favorite out of all these concepts. I like the gold in the other suit, but like Andy said in his post, maybe it might be a bit too much for, you know, live action, and I could see this one really, really working. So. Could this be a concept that they take, or, you know, the schematics for it, like the basis, and carry it out into, say, Season 6 suit? Because surely they got to get a new suit. Surely they've heard the criticism of the last suit that they got, the new upgrade for Season 5. So, yeah, I'm really hoping for something like this in the near future. Maybe this can be a future Flash suit. I really, really do dig it. So let's move on past this and talk about some of these Q&A questions that we'll get to now. So, this is the next question. If Barry vanishes in crisis, how can Barry send the future message to the legends from 2056? Well, the answer to that is, that's pretty simple. Basically, the timeline change and all of these timeline changes have caused that timeline in 2056 to not exist, basically. That is what you're supposed to infer. That was the Savitar timeline that was you know before all the changes and especially now after these big changes recently that timeline definitely doesn't exist so if Barry does in fact vanish in crisis it won't really matter because that message made it back from that specific timeline and that timeline is not our future so that's the answer to that so the next question is will there be a main villain at the start of the season so this is very interesting and I've mentioned this a couple of times I do believe Red Death is going to be the villain of this season. They teased him and, you know, he's a big thing right now in the comics because a lot of people really like him. I think he's great. And obviously there's the question of can they bring Batman in? How are they going to do it? How are they going to change it? Obviously, if they bring him in, they're going to change it. It's not going to be Batman and, you know, the Flash molded together. Maybe it's the Flash molded with someone else from another Earth. I love that concept. I think that concept is brilliant. So, will there be a main villain at the start of the season? And I think there's not going to be a main villain for the most part. I reckon just before the finale, like the mid-season finale, we're going to get the introduction of Red Death, and then that's where it's going to happen. Maybe they tease it at the start. But I think the main problem with the past two villains that we've had, the Thinker and Cicada, is they got introduced in Episode 1. Their story was dragged on throughout the whole season from episode one onwards that is a massive no-no and you can tell you know if you look at rain or you look at zoom or you look at savitar they work 
because they are built up to. There is anticipation and week to week you're excited to find out who the main villain is and I think the main problem was probably dragging it on way too long. Get an interesting story, bring them a bit later, you don't have to drag them on throughout the whole season. You know, Cicada could have been defeated in, you know, two episodes or three episodes, but you know, he just flew away every time and she flew away every time at the end. And same thing goes for the thinker, it's just, there wasn't a good villain arc and there was nothing to do basically. So. I believe that Red Death or whoever the main villain turns out to be will come at about the mid-season and also they said they're focusing on Crisis, you know the Flash people didn't specifically say that, Stephen Amell said that, who plays obviously Green Arrow and Oliver, but there is obviously an emphasis on Crisis in the first part of these seasons because you know all of the endings for the Arrowverse shows teased Crisis so you can naturally infer that that's going to happen, you know, there's going to be an emphasis on Crisis at the start. So, the next question is, will Barry actually disappear in Crisis? So this is a good question, and the blatant and plain answer is, no, he's not going to vanish, he's not going to disappear, they're going to change the timeline as Nora predicted or Nora tried to do, and maybe it's Nora coming back, Nora helps him out or something, but what they're going to do in Crisis is stop Crisis, maybe he vanishes for like an episode in the crossover or something like that, then they have the iconic fight where they go back in time, maybe that's in the Flash episode, I would love that, and everyone thinks, oh shit, Barry's vanished, and Iris is like, oh my god, it's actually come true, but then he returns, and because of the timeline changes, he returns, he's all fine, I reckon that's probably what's going to happen, he's not going to go missing, maybe he goes missing for one or two episodes, but I would say that's about it, but, you know, Oliver's most likely going to die, Oliver's made a deal with the Monitor, and, you know, Barry, he, he's the main character of the show, there is no way you can do that, they couldn't even put Barry away for one episode during the season 4 premiere, when he was supposed to be away, stuck in the Speed Force, so... Yeah, he's not really going anywhere, and I think he shouldn't go anywhere, maybe for a few episodes, but then you get the exploration of him going back in time with Reverse Flash, fighting it out, see where that version of Barry actually went. And so the final question moving on from that is, do you think Red Death could be Oliver Queen from another Earth? So I've seen this brought up a couple of times because, you know, like I mentioned prior, Red Death in the comics is a mixture it's a sort of molding of two characters. There is Batman and Barry Allen. Batman is from the Dark Multiverse. He's from Earth-52. And he actually knocks out Barry, chains him up to the Batmobile. They go into the Speed Force and he gets Speed Force powers. So Bruce is in control, this dark version of Bruce. And Barry is in his subconscious. And that's basically what makes Red Death. It's a mixture of Batman and the Flash. And he's bad and he's part of the Dark Knight's Metal. So, that is what, you know, the concept for Red Death is. So, I think the concept's brilliant. Obviously, they can't do Batman. Not expecting Batman. I reckon it would be amazing if they could do Oliver Queen as Red Death. But, more likely than not, that's not going to happen. Because the reason Steven is stopping Arrow, the reason they are actually finishing Arrow with next season, is due to Steven because he's done it for this many years and... He thinks, you know, they can wrap it up and end it at a good point. So the likelihood of him returning for a major role that would be Red Death as a villain is slim to none. Like, barely nothing. But I think the idea of having a different character moulded with a version of the Flash, not our version of the Flash, but, you know, maybe one from another Earth. It doesn't have to be Barry, it could be Wally, it could be Jay, it could be a totally new speedster, it could be the Accelerated Man you know, the concept is right there for merging a character with a version of the Flash. I think that is a brilliant idea and I totally am down for whoever it is if they do do that and I really do hope they go forward with potentially what they have teased, you know, back in earlier this season. So I'm really, really excited for next season. I absolutely can't wait. So thank you for the support recently, especially on that trailer video. Yeah, it's not monetized or anything. That's because, you know, with editing, you have to use music and stuff and it's all copyrighted. But 
I just want to say a massive thank you for all of you who have watched that, given me support because I love making those editing videos and it's sort of blown up. It's over 100k views right now. Also, some of my other videos are doing really well, so I can't thank you guys enough. We're on the route to getting 100k subscribers. We are so close. We're on 96k. The last week has been amazing. With some of these videos blowing up, you know, some more of you guys have come. So I want to say a massive thank you to all of you new subscribers, but also all of you OG subscribers that have been here the whole time or, you know, have been here recently as we sort of go to that 100k mark. I can't wait. I've got some exciting videos planned and I just can't wait to get that tick and get that plaque. And obviously we'll do videos surrounding that so very excited thank you for the support and i will catch you guys later goodbye